Okay, joining us now, the ranking member of House Homeland Security, he's Congressman John Katko. Congressman, it's great to see you again. Okay, what is the plan uh, for House Republicans to probe President Biden's botched withdrawal from Afghanistan? We know that 13 U.S. troops are dead. Senate Foreign Relations found he left behind and stranded 9,000 Americans. But what exactly is your strategy? Well, the strategy is to find out why it happened the way it did, but more importantly, What's the follow fallout from that from a homeland security standpoint? It's really a two-pronged inquiry. One is, is al-Qaeda, is ISIS and other terrorist groups reconstituting within Afghanistan? Is the threat level going up? Christopher Ray, the FBI director in a hearing last month with us, said he was very concerned about that, and that's chilling. The other thing is, how do we handle the, all the Afghan refugees who came into the United States? And the process broke down, the vetting process broke down, and are we doing everything we can to make sure that we didn't let bad guys from Afghanistan get into the U.S.? Yeah, because uh, stay with me. Hang on one second. We have 98 terrorists on the terror watch list caught trying <laughs> yeah. to cross into the yep. U.S. between ports of entry. 380 encounters with terrorists at, a, at, at the U.S. borders and ports of entry. That mu includes multiple encounters. But it's a target-rich field of mistakes. I mean, the botched rationale for pulling out U.S. troops and air cover before getting all Americans out? Letting the Taliban dictate airport security where the airlift was being conducted? Yeah, it, it, it was just a colossal series of failures. And what's deeply troubling to me is whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, a conservative, or a liberal, you should have done oversight to find out why this happened and uh, what we can do to make sure it doesn't happen again. And another thing you got to really think about is what chain of events did Afghanistan's withdrawal set off from a foreign policy standpoint, namely, did, did Putin feel emboldened looking at a weakened foreign policy from this administration as a springboard to go into Ukraine? Those are all things we want to look at and things we're going to have to do going yeah. forward, for sure. Because there's that new Pentagon report last week that found that China is capitalizing on this, portraying the U.S. as weak to the world and feckless and not a reliable uh, you know, geopolitical partner. So that was that new Pentagon report came out. But w does the House GOP really expect to get declassified documents from the Pentagon, the State Department, and other agencies on this? Because the new chair of House Oversight, Congressman Comer, is saying there's uh, more than f five dozen, almost six dozen instances where you guys are getting blocked from the White House on this. Well, that's what subpoena power is for. And we'll have subpoena power in the majority. And we can subpoena these documents if they don't. If they, if they, if they uh, choose not to uh, comply with the subpoenas, we, we have an uh, enforcement mechanism through the courts. They certainly did it to uh, our side last time, and it's time we do this, and we have to exercise that authority going forward. This is far too critical a problem to, to not, not get to the bottom of, and it's yeah. not a gotcha thing. It's a, how, can we, how did this happen? How can we make sure we keep our homeland safe, given what happened? And, you know, the families of the 13 troops uh. who died, they deserve a sense of justice. The 9,000 Americans stranded, they deserve justice. I mean, we were going to listen to the president. Uh, he claimed that al-Qaeda was gone when it wasn't. He had to do a drone strike to knock out al Zawahiri, the heir to Osama bin Laden. Watch this. We went to Afghanistan almost 20 years ago with clear goals. Get those who attacked us on September 11, 2001, and make sure al-Qaeda could not use Afghanistan as a base from which to attack us again. We did that. We severely degraded al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. We never gave up the hunt for Osama bin Laden, and we got him. That was a decade ago. What interest do we have in Afghanistan at this point with al-Qaeda gone? We went to Afghanistan for the express purpose of getting rid of Al Qaeda in Afghanistan, as well as as well as getting Osama bin Laden, and we did. No, you didn't. Al Qaeda was not gone. You needed a drone right. strike to get rid of Al Zawahiri. This is when Biden's approval rating started to go down. Is Al Qaeda still is Al Qaeda gone from Afghanistan? No. Listen, the leader of Al Qaeda was living in downtown Kabul. That tells you all you need to know. They've got a head of a terrorist network called the Akani Network, who's one of the senior officials in the Afghan government. And if the, and if the president, I'll, ask, I'll answer the president's question about why would we need to stay there now. Nobody wants to be there, but if you have a secure air base that's uber secure, that allows you to continue with your intelligence networks developed over 20 years within Afghanistan, 
that will be the best way to keep an eye on yeah. what's going on within Afghanistan. We don't have that now, and Christopher Wray and others within his own administration are very worried about we that. we got to stick on this just for one more second. I mean, the sure. FBI in May arrested an Iraqi asylum seeker. He was threatening to assassinate former President George W. Bush. Mm -hmm. uh, he was plotting to bring more terrorists across the southern border to do that. Also, a, a woman who was a Kansas mother worked with, he, she was an ISIS leader. She was working with, uh, you know, ISIS leader al-Baghdadi to blow up college campuses mm -hmm. and a shopping mall. We don't know where they were, or where this was, by smuggling and getting across the border, the southern border terrorists to do all of that. So this is why people are worried. Final word. Yeah, that's a, you're exactly right. And listen, accountability is key. And we've got our job as one of our key jobs on Homeland Security is to do oversight to make sure our country is safe. It's not about getting back at individuals. It's about making sure our country is safe. And we're going to make sure we do that next term. Big got time. Got it. Congressman Katko, pleasure having you on. Merry Christmas to you. As you as well.